Hi everyone. My guest today is an elite American runner and an amazing person. She's an Olympic trials silver medalist, a half marathon national champion, and a cross country national champion as well. She's battled career threatening injuries to rise to those heights, and her story serves as amazing motivation for all of us to keep on grinding. So please join me in welcoming the truly inspirational Natasha Rogers. everybody. My guest this evening is a running coach and elite distance runner for Hanson's Brooks. She's a three-time All-American from Texas A&M. In 2012, she won the 10K title at the Outdoor NCAA Championships and later that year became the Olympic Trials silver medalist in the 10K distance. In 2017, she won the Half Marathon National Championship and after suffering career-threatening knee injuries, she battled her way back to professional racing to become the 2020 cross country national champion. She's a real inspiration for all of us trying to push our limits in this sport of running and a great person to know. So without further ado, everyone, I'd like to introduce you to the amazing Natasha Rogers. Welcome, Natasha, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. That's Definitely a real want to to share my story. <laughs> It's an absolute thrill to have you here. It's just um, something I've been looking forward to ever since I first discovered your channel on YouTube. So, um, yeah. It's awesome um, to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed your channel. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so oh, much. Interesting. Um, if we're just going to just uh, jump right into it, um, I'd like you to go back uh, in history and talk about your athletic background. Um, whatever you think is relevant, just um, start from the beginning. All right, well, running has basically been the sole focus for me um, the majority of my whole life. Uh, I oftentimes have a hard time relating to like the average person because my, my life has been so hyper-focused on sport um, from a young age uh, in high school, showing promising talent, um, my team in high school was state championship um, winners and my sister was like the individual state champ that year. So um, oh. she's definitely like part of the reason why I've fallen in love with running. Um, we definitely explored that together and uh, realized how much success like can come out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then that trickled into getting a scholarship, um, running for a three-time national championship track and field team. And then just the camaraderie of that team uh, did something for me energy-wise. And um, that led to me winning a national championship, uh, D1, and then um, getting second place at the Olympic trials in the 10K in 2012, but missing making the Olympics um, which is why I have like a vendetta <laughs> and, um, <laughs> once I signed pro, um, out of college, I've been going after the Olympics since then. So hopefully, um, we can have an Olympics next year and I can make it work. <laughs> exactly. 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 And knowing you, you're going to make it happen. You're just such a force of, of positivity. I, I just see it coming for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I try. I try. It's not easy all the time. Oh, the I, negative I, I, thoughts I, like to creep in sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that because, um, you know, I just want to uh, kind of preempt things a little bit here and tell everybody who's watching, um, just to be aware, um, Natasha's YouTube channel is just an amazing resource for positive energy. Um, if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for motivation, if you're looking for solid advice on how to overcome those negative thoughts that creep into all of our heads, just check out everything that Natasha posts. She's just brilliant and she's helped me so many times, probably without even knowing it. Um, and I know she's going to help you too. So um, with that said, Natasha, I just want to bounce it back to you. 
um, so we can keep going through, um, you know, uh, your, your athletic background. You kind of touched on what got started running. Um, is yeah. there anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, just, yeah, this, this healthy competition with my sister, we always pushed each other to a higher level. Um, she is an amazing human. She, in high school, she was prom queen, uh, student body government president, wow. homecoming queen, state champ. She was all these things. And I wouldn't have it any other way. She definitely set the bar high for me. And uh, we were born to run. Um, just seeing early success at a young age um, just made me know what my passion was like very early on. And it was almost like a calling and a spiritual journey as well. That's amazing. That's so great to have that kind of focus at such an early age. I mean, you know, I, that, yeah. that's, that's a gift because a lot of us, you know, probably the vast majority of humanity just kind of, it takes a while to figure it all out. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I've been there too. When I've lost running, I'm like, what do I even like to do? I don't know. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So um, to take things a little further, kind of a little bit more present day, um, what does your training schedule look like these days? Um, and, and break it down if you don't mind about, you know, days per week, miles per week, how things change from season to season. And I don't want to load you up too much here, but um, even talk about cross training and all that kind of stuff. What, 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 what goes into being a champion? Oh yeah, I can talk about this all day. Um, <laughs> especially now that I'm coaching because I've definitely just developed a passion for coaching um, and changed my whole approach and mindset um, to my own training because of coaching other people and thinking about it differently. Um, but currently I'm under Kevin Hansen with um, the Hansen's Original Distance Project and I'm training harder than I ever have in my entire life. Um, awesome. I'm running higher mileage than I ever have, which is definitely the Hansen like motto basically um and i'm ready for it i finally reached that age where um my body has matured as like a woman and um there's definitely those growing pains throughout my career and mentally as well and i think mentally i'm more equipped to handling the pressure and the load and everything and taking care of myself and the right balance of things um, but to answer your question, sorry, I kind of ventured no, no, off. No, 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 I think this is all very relevant. And, and there's, you know, learning how to balance is just a huge part of it. Um, yes. And I think that's why, Again. absolutely, I'm in complete agreement. I think that's why, you know, um, the more mature somebody is, the, the, the more um, successful they are. Yeah, and that's what my coach, like, upon first meeting me, he was like, I can tell you're like the most emotionally attached to this um, than anyone I've ever, I will ever coach. And um, he saw to me how much that fire is within me, but sometimes there's like drawbacks to having that fire as well. Yeah. Um, but anyways, currently I'm working up to around 70 um, miles a week, maybe even a, a little over that. Um, which is a lot for me and uh, it's definitely a challenge. Um, and then doing like up to six mile hard workouts, like where we're getting ready to hit the A standard in December um, to get the Olympic qualifier. Um, I already got the B standard, but now I have to get the world A standard, um, which is about a minute faster. Wow. So we're doing um, six mile workouts in like the five, uh, well, we're gonna have to be getting down to like 505, 503 pace. Um, so it's a lot. I definitely felt a little overwhelmed today when my coach sent me my schedule. Um, I'll be going up to Michigan for a team Ekaden and pacing a half marathon for like Emma Bates and some BAA girls and um, so yeah, exciting things ahead. 
That's very cool. That's very cool. I'm, the, the times you're talking about are just so superhuman. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's insane. I don't, my poor body is like, <laughs> I mean, it's all it, all my body knows at this point. It's almost like a addiction, like that runners yep. get, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. I mean, at a very different level at a very, you know, amateur level. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, when I'm, even when I miss a day, I just feel horrible. So yeah, as, as my body is just used to that rhythm. So yeah, it's a huge dopamine and serotonin release in your brain. Um, yeah. More than people even realize. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, and it's sometimes, you know, even when you have a bad week, you know, if, there, if nothing special happens on, on any workout that week, it's like, you don't think you're getting a high out of it, but as soon as you take a break and you, you're not getting those same yeah. serotonin and, and, and those boosts of good vibes, it's like you suddenly realize, oh, I better get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, um, all right. I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit just because I want people to get a well-rounded picture of uh, your career. So um, if you don't mind just walking us through the highlights of uh, your career, like, um, you know, and they don't even necessarily have to be the professional high points. They can just be what worked for you mentally, emotionally, physically, you know. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, it definitely doesn't always have to be a trophy. Um, it's just being in a really good place, which it can be hard with running. Um, but my high points um, definitely have been the like achievements. Um, that's what stands out to me the most. But really, there is that underlying just spiritual journey and joy. Um, but I would say winning my first national championship, um, just everything that went behind that, like seeing my hard work pay off. Um, at a young age, it was like, okay, this is cool. Like you work hard and things happen and you can manifest things. And so my first national championship and then uh, a month later beating um, America's, arguably America's most decorated female distance runner, Shalane Flanagan at the Olympic trials. And Amazing placing second uh, right behind Amy Hastings after getting tripped and falling down in the race and trampled by the field. Um, I just learned so much about myself um, that year. And it's been hard to get back to that place. And I think I always strive to be that level of success, but throughout my career um, and growing up, I'm almost 30, I'm 29. Um, I've had to learn that I can't compare myself to the past. And now my high points are, I, I fell down like several times and I got back up. Um, something wasn't working for me on the East Coast and I took a risk and made a change. And then I started seeing success. So That's little awesome. successes like that, that aren't as like glamorous, but um, are just a testament to my ability to like survive in the sport. Um, but I'm definitely going for top three at the Olympic trials and That's being awesome. in Tokyo. So that's what I'm really shooting for. Um, and trying to manifest. Gotcha, gotcha. And and I, I just know everybody who watches this, especially myself. We're all rooting for you. Um, we're all going to be watching very closely. And um, uh, you know, if uh, if we can manifest a spiritual force to push you faster Please. and further, I so with believe you. in that. To anyone who's watching, if you could just send a thought, because I. I've been meditating a lot and your thoughts that you put out into the universe basically come back to you. And, um, I really believe in that. So that would be awesome. And I did want to mention, um, two other high points, um, winning the half marathon national championships and then the cross country championships 
um, basically were comebacks and um, I just like, I always forget to like um, be proud of those moments. So I just wanted to mention those as well. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did because um, it's, it's part of the whole inspirational arc of your story. Um, and, and there's so much more to come. Um, I, I can just tell from, from your attitude, you know, without knowing all the technical bits of how your training is going and stuff, just judging by the way you talk about your past and how it's so fluidly leading in, you into a positive future. It's, you know, every time I watch your videos, I, I don't want to go on and on about this. I don't want to be hyperbolic, but of all the people that I follow, you know, in the professional running realm, it's most clearly visible with you that you've got your head on straight and that you're, you're just going there. There's just like, you know what I mean? It's like, I wouldn't call it tunnel vision because you're obviously very well balanced. You talk about meditation and all those things that are so important to keeping yourself in a healthy headspace, but you're just focused and it's just so great to watch you, you know, every time you post, there's something, there's some nugget in every one of your videos that just shows that, you know, Natasha's got it going on. She's, she's, she's doing the right stuff. That's so cool to hear. Seriously, that makes me really happy. And I always wonder, cause like with the analytics that you can look at with YouTube, I feel like, it shows that people only watch like the first couple minutes yeah, and yeah. it's like, but the, the actual good part was like <laughs> deeper in and it's like, um, but it's cool that it's resonating with some people. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. It definitely is. You know, um, I like to be very, um, you know, I've got a lot of people that I subscribe to, but there, there are probably, you know, a couple dozen who every time I see a video, I get excited because, you know, I know, I, I get to watch the whole thing and it's only going to keep getting better as time goes on. And uh, your channel is definitely one of them. That's awesome. I'm going to like get to making a video right now after this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been awesome. putting one off because <laughs> so it's cool. so much work, but. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're worth it though. I mean, you know. Um, they're you know. so fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because the shooting is the best part. It's just for me when I'm, when I'm in the editing room, uh, <laughs> I know. That's not it's my like, favorite here bit. We go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, all right. I think we've touched on my next question a little bit, but I, I, I'd like you to dig a little deeper, maybe. Um, I'm kind of curious about um, your motivation now. I know you're working towards the Olympic trials, um, but um, what else keeps you fired up? Um, uh, and what are your future goals even beyond uh, the Olympic trials? So I'm an ambitious one. Um, <laughs> some of my goals are really like far-fetched, but um, that's just my personality. Um, what keeps me motivated now is the present moment, actually. I've been really focusing on enjoying the journey and not the destination. Um, I really struggled with that in the past. And um, that's when things go off the derail. And yeah. um, so right now I'm just motivated to be fully present in like my fitness that I'm in right now and the opportunity that I have. And just this, sometimes I like to feel sorry for myself um, and like be like, oh, my job is so hard and there's so much pressure. But I wouldn't feel as alive as I did without that. And so I just really try to appreciate that right now. Um, and then in the future, um, I definitely want to start running marathons. Um, I have the best coach to be able to do that with, and I trust him fully. And I do believe that there's like a lot of hope for me in the marathons. I, I'm very money driven. I love the prize money in the marathons. And um, <laughs> I mean, winning my first half marathon um, in 2017 was like, okay, maybe I could do this. Um, That's amazing. And then I eventually want to move to the triathlon, um, like wow. 
just as a fun thing, maybe in my 30s, like I want to do an Ironman and just see if I can like crush it in the Ironman and like do so something cool. really cool. Because <laughs> oh, I bike and swim a lot. Okay, okay, so it's a natural fit, okay. Yeah, I love all three. It's just like, I like to, I like cardio, I like to zone out, I like to feel the burn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's a uh, uh, that's something. Uh, all the people who like to go marathon or further seem to have that in common. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and triathlon is just. I've had a few people ask me if I wanted to go there, and um, it just scares me too much. <laughs> really? Oh, you got to try it. <laughs> uh, maybe a mini one just to see. Get my. Do you feet. like the water? Are you a swimmer? I'm not scared of it, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. It's, oh, okay, it's, really? You know, I like I like biking, and I I mean I love running. I didn't even discover running until I was forty two years old. Oh so wow! It was one of those things. I picked it up nine years ago just as a way to lose weight, and okay. there was an absolute obsession immediately. <laughs> That's so cool that it can you can find it like later on in life like that. Yeah, it's really cool yeah. to hear different stories like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just one of those things where. Um, to me, it doesn't matter what generation you're from. I mean, you're, you're, you're much younger than me. And uh, I'm even friends with, through YouTube with um, some runners who are really, really young, like teenagers. But the one thing that we, that brings us all together is just the obsession, you know, yeah. it's just, and it's not an unhealthy obsession. It's just a, an absolute love for the experience of being on the road. Yes. I've seen those teenagers vlogging about running and um, I've seen those videos and it's inspiring to me to watch them. I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are so driven at a young age. And I remember being like that, but that we have the internet now. So now we can support each other better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's an amazing time. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, otherwise we, we, you know, we wouldn't even know, you know, that each other exist. So, but, yeah. You know. There's also drawbacks to the internet and knowing too much about other people's lives, I think, but because we tend to compare ourselves, especially runners, it's like you can definitely have like negative drawbacks as well to be conscious of at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because the, I think the, I'm, I'm probably going to flub this quote, but um, the best way I've ever said, heard it put is don't, don't compete with others, compete with your own history. And, you know, that resonated so perfect with me because, you know, I get obsessive myself and I'm sure so many people watching are obsessing over trying to shave 15 seconds here or 10 seconds there. And um, I think um, the people who stay in it the longest, who don't get frustrated because they can't keep up with their neighbor are the people who are doing exactly that. They're just competing with themselves. Yeah. That's so valid, yeah. So um, on that subject, um, I'm kind of curious because, you know, I, I will never be a professional and will never be an elite uh, runner like you. Um, how do you deal with the, the highs and the lows and the, all that um, external expectation? Um, how do you deal with it um, in a healthy way? And, um, you know, um, what are the pitfalls that you have to watch out for? So <laughs> that is um, a very good question. Uh, it's definitely hard and I don't think I'll ever be perfect at it, but I will say that I'm getting so much better um, at dealing with the highs and lows because they are so inevitable. Um, being an athlete and calling your sport a profession uh, when there's money involved and shoe companies and sponsorship and um, just getting older and having to support yourself. Um, but more so than that, um, the expectations you hold yourself to and where you want to see yourself um, and then having to deal with failure um, and injuries and things out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, but I've learned that it's a choice. You're either going to suffer or survive. Um, and in doing that, you have to 
change your mentality. Um, so, and like, for example, when you're injured, if we like to not accept that that's the fact and that we can't run and we could go on for months not accepting that it's not happening right now. Like my body is not working right now. Um, and I've experienced some deep, deep depression with injury um, and uh, even questionable like malpractice situations where wow. um, my running career was definitely in jeopardy. Um, and uh, well, it, I, it was, I lost my job. I lost my sponsorship with New Balance um, just, just because I wasn't able to run um, and perform anymore. Um, and so what I found that worked for me is acceptance. Uh, the day, and it was almost like a snap of a finger. It took me a whole year. I was in pain for about a year and a half. Um, but the day that I accepted what was going on um, was the day I started healing. And um, I really do feel like your brain has to heal mentally before your body can heal physically and they have to communicate with each other. And um, that's where like the meditation and stuff comes in. Um, but having hope, that's the biggest thing. Um, hope in the darkest of situations, um, focusing on other things and just basically exploring other like areas in life. And that's been a huge focus of mine recently is exploring, making sure that I'm doing other things as like insurance, as like a backup, like exploring these other passions so that I'm not just a runner. I'm not defined in running and I don't get all my joy from running. Um, so that's why I'm coaching now and um, just really, really trying to explore like other options for me, like once my running career is over because there is a deadline and it doesn't last like throughout my life um, like other people's jobs do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's such such a physically demanding um, situation to be a, a professional athlete, I guess, in any arena. Yeah, yeah, it really is mentally yeah. and physically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, all right, I think we've kind of, you've kind of naturally just kind of answered part of the next question. Um, I keep doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think it's wonderful. I think um, I think that's a sign that um, we're kind of going down the right path at the right time so um cool so um I, I want to dig a little bit more um, because when you were talking about um when you were talking about uh your injury and, and learning to deal with the highs and the lows um you said there was a particular moment when um things kind of clicked for you um can you can you give us a little more on that yeah so it was in thailand <laughs> okay um basically I, it was the end of 2018. Um, I was still having, like, I was still in pain while walking. Um, my contract was coming to a close and usually you like re-sign um, or renew your contract. Um, and basically we just, my agent and I knew that that wasn't happening because I hadn't run for a year. Um, and that's just how the industry works. Um, we're all very replaceable <laughs> and it's a brutal industry, um, but it's just, it's how it goes. It's sport. Um, and so I was like thinking about what jobs I was going to do. I was applying to all this stuff. And before the year was over, I instead bought a ticket to Thailand and I was like, before I have to get a corporate job, I'm going to do something for myself that will be healing that I won't be able to do when I have a job. Um, yeah. So I went to Thailand for a month and um, there I just completely surrendered control. I let go like um, 
and I'm speaking in like a meditative state, not just like going crazy in Thailand. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain that switch that happens in internally in your mind, and um, I guess just not straining and forcing, um, and just accepting. Like I said earlier, yeah, yeah. I literally experience this like miraculous um healing mentally and then following that was a physical healing and um and by that i mean that spread over like six months so i had to come back to america i got a corporate job at a tech company i was selling selling artificial intelligence i was <laughs> learning about myself in other areas not focusing on running um okay and then my agent, he, he called me um, a couple times and it's like, come on, come back. And I was like, if you can find me something, then I will, but wow. I'm trying to do my job over here. <laughs> gotcha. um, and then the Hansons gave me an amazing opportunity and I feel so lucky and it's a really good fit with them. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, so it's it's funny. It's like you let go, and suddenly the universe just kind of made a way. Yes, yeah, it's how it works, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny. As soon as you open yourself up to possibilities, yes. they just Opening magically appear. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's don't amazing. be closed-minded. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Things don't necessarily follow the path that you expect. No. You know? But um, I'm so glad this worked out for you because wow. Uh, um, what you've done since then is amazing and so inspiring. So um, I'm hoping maybe you can talk a little bit about um, the road back um, physically. Um, how did you go from uh, not being even able to run to getting back to uh, elite levels again? Uh, it's, it was crazy. Um, it, was not easy but at the same time i just feel like the universe was kind of conspiring for me um i felt really like guided um spiritually and just like i knew what i needed to do um i knew when i needed to be patient and i was nice to myself in the process um so i got <laughs> sponsored i left my corporate job and i got sponsored um last summer and then all of that fall it was a really rough journey back it was it was just trying um to see that fitness again trying to make my body work i was still in a lot of pain um both of my That's knees so wow. i would like burn my knees in the bathtub like right under the faucet and just like that was like my only coping mechanism for dealing with the pain I experienced in my knees. Um, wow. But it takes a lot of <laughs> mental strength and um, things started clicking uh, at the end of last year. Um, I started racing the big dogs again and sorry, my cat is eating <laughs> and she's like really <laughs> loud and she's fat. Oh, wow. She's and cute. Wow. <laughs> so like, that's what that noise is. Um, okay, no, that's cool. I've been wondering, actually, in all truth, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> I was wondering if you could see or hear. Oh, how cute. <laughs> I, I have to let him. Sorry, say that again. He looks very well behaved. Oh, well, it's a rare moment right now. But um, <laughs> the He's, uh, if I, if I don't have him in the room with me, he would be barking and you'd hear him through the walls. So oh. <laughs> that's why he's hanging out with me right now. Um, so anyways, I don't know what I was saying. Um, my cat interrupted. Oh yeah, no, we were just talking about the road back and, and, and oh, the, yeah. the tough physical road back. Yes. So at the end of last year, um, I started racing the big dogs and I was like, I just made a decision. Sometimes it's as easy as making a decision, making something up in your mind, like, no, I'm going to do this and I'm yep. going to come back. 
and um, I just started working really hard again, two a day workouts, um, zoning out, learning how to deal with the the pain, the good pain of running. Yeah. Um, and then I had a really good opportunity to win a national championship at the beginning of 2020 because of the fact that the half marathon trials were happening. So it was less competitive. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go win that. And like, <laughs> maybe you might come back. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah. I'll just go win that. No biggie. <laughs> I wrote it on my mirror and yeah, I, like I said, it really can be as simple as making a decision and then hyper focusing on that decision. Um, gotcha. And then the days of doing that is what the, that's the hard part, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The grind. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, with that, I want, I want you to kind of um, expand on just that personal focus, which is so important. I think the most important thing I think you already touched on, but um. Tell us a little bit about the advantages of being part of um, a running team and um, what are, and in kind, what are the advantages of a good coach? Yeah, um, I've definitely learned the value of having a team um, this year, like this past year. Um, I've always been a lone wolf, even in college, um, like, our sprint squad was really good and our, yeah, our sprinting squad. Um, but I was kind of the only distance person who would make it to nationals. So I would train alone a lot. Um, and then my first eight years of being a pro, I, I basically trained a solo. Um, but I saw a plateau and then I saw a downfall <laughs> and, um, I truly do believe that having a team is so important. Having the coach athlete relationship is beyond important. Um, and it's not because special workouts or anything like that. Like we're all doing the same stuff. It's more a relationship where um, you get each other, you're meeting in the middle and then you're syncing up to that perfect sweet spot, which is everything. And it's different for every athlete. So that's what makes a good coach is someone who realizes it's not a formula that fits all. It's someone who can be a people person, someone who can handle emotion, handle different types of athletes, and then um, kind of foster that relationship with the right balance. Um, and then as far as the team is concerned, we're, we're making each other better through a healthy competition. Um, and you're not going to get better unless that aspect is there. So that's why I go to Michigan um, a handful of times throughout the year. Um, I go to Florida with my team and those girls kick my butt into shape. They are. <laughs> that's awesome. I have so much respect for my teammates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like from the, the very small window um, that, that um, you show on your YouTube channel, um, it looks like you guys are really um, a good team. Like, it, it seems like everybody, all the individual parts, it seems like everybody's a good positive influence. But, and, and when you all come together, it just seems like so much positivity and so much fun. I, I can only imagine that um, that could only help you. Yeah, it really is so much fun. Um, and we're all just like trying so hard to like do the best that we can. It, that sort of energy is really important to be around. Um, and shoot, I lost my train of thought. I definitely had something <laughs> important to say about my team, but <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. If it comes back to you, just, you know, we'll just go backwards. No big okay, deal. it probably um, will. So it'll, it'll come. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to go in order here. We just flow of consciousness, whatever works. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, while we're talking about um, the importance of a coach, the, the positivity of being in a group um, on a running team, um, 
Talk about how all that comes together, your personal focus, the coach, the team. How did that help you to get to um, and to win the 2020 Cross Country National Championship? Well, um, starting just with the opportunity um, to come back, because no one else was really going to give it to me. Um, it's just how it works. Um, if you're not relevant, if you're not performing or, you know, like no one wants to bring back a retired athlete. So the opportunity and then um, the acceptance of the teammates um, running, <laughs> running is a very competitive sport and we're all a little bit like psycho. Like <laughs> we're, just, we're a little bit, um, just very passionate about our goals. And so the fact that this team accepted me and like just appreciated me for who I am was really important. And um, I definitely have to earn my respect though. And I think that's a good thing. Um, that's what I was gonna say earlier was okay. uh, having a team hold you accountable because when you're doing everything solo, you get comfortable in your bad habits, your bad routines, and even like your diva qualities <laughs> is how I explain myself sometimes. Is I can turn into a little bit of a diva. Like I have things like this is how I do my training and blah, blah, blah. Like this is how I like my things. And um, they toughen me up quite a bit. They hold me accountable and it's so good for me. It's made me like a, way more well-rounded um, athlete and um, just knowing that I have to earn my respect and I think that's cool because nothing mm -hmm. should be handed to anybody. Um, so the fact that we're all kind of doing that for each other is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, exactly. It doesn't let you slip. You know, you, yeah. you know you, there's other people watching you and making sure you're making all the right yeah, moves. They don't let me sleep in past my alarm clock. <laughs> at home way too much <laughs> that's just kind of cool though that's pretty cool it doesn't feel good at the time i'm sure but you know <laughs> that's cool so um it's funny because um when you talk about accountability with your team um i've been finding the same thing in my very sort of low performance amateur kind of way with youtube um you know putting putting my goals out there has done a lot for me in, in really? being true. Yeah, it's funny because um, I just put it out there that I'm going to try to break my 5K record, which, um, you know, in the time of uh, COVID with no real races out there, um, a friend and I are just going to do a time trial in a couple of weeks yeah. and uh, we're both going for it. And uh, it's funny, ever since we've gone public with this on my channel, it's been like, um, oh boy, I better take this seriously. I better get on with it. That's so cool that you're saying that because I used to protect my goals and I wouldn't like to talk about it to anybody, but that's not good. And it's, it's okay to be open about it and it's even beneficial. So I'm excited. When is that happening? I'm going to stay tuned for that. Oh, sure. Yeah. We're going to do it on uh, October 17th. So like two and a half weeks from now. Um, okay. Cool. We, and you're going to vlog it or. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've been vlogging it for like, um, I don't know, I think five weeks now. Um, okay. We just kind of, we were sitting there because uh, the, the guy I'm doing it with, we actually uh, work at the same company together. And uh, okay. we talk running all the time. So we were like, hey, you know what? You know what we should do on your YouTube channel? So and I was like, hey, that's a great <laughs> idea. So off we went. But, I'm uh, so excited. I'll be rooting for you for sure. <laughs> that's so cool. It's just, just knowing that you're aware of this is just uh, Mind blowing and humbling. <laughs> it's funny. I get so invested in other people's goals, like almost too invested, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I've learned that through coaching. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, speaking of YouTube, I'm going to switch gears a little bit with you. And um, I'm curious um, somebody who's as hyper focused as you are on your running. What got you started with YouTube? How, where did that come from? So I've always been like very passionate about vlogging. <laughs> like even before vlogging was a thing, I'm dead serious. 
Um, my parents have like endless home videos that I made by myself, like just doing whatever, like playing <laughs> in my room, like going in the backyard. Uh, I don't know what I was. Yeah. So I've always had that passion. And then with these things, like, I, I don't know. I just gravitate towards video making like Snapchat was a big thing for me. Okay. Uh, shame to say, but, um, <laughs> so once, once I kind of felt brave enough, um, and I think, yeah, that's what held me back before. Cause I've always wanted to do it. I always wanted to be the first one in the running community to do it, but people definitely beat me to that, to that just because I wasn't brave enough or ready um to handle that because it is a lot of putting yourself out there more so than anything else but that's who I am I'm raw and I'm genuine and I can't put up this facade and that's why I struggle with things like Instagram because like I just don't like it like it all seems plastic and fake and like kind of not mentally good for people <laughs> Instagram. Okay. but I like YouTube because it's you get to truly know like someone through their videos and it's not this facade. Um, and so that's what I want to bring to the YouTube community is um, what it truly is like to have an Olympic ambition. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And that's just not my personality. I'm, I'm, I have good intentions. I want to put positive energy out there. Um, but like, I'm also real and um, like, I, I think that that's a really good thing in the world we live in um, for us to be more real instead of putting on this front that our lives are so glamorous. <laughs> exactly. I get exactly. paid to work out and like, no, it's not like that. <laughs> no, I think that's awesome because um, the, the fact that the way you describe the way you want to present your channel is exactly the way I perceive it. Really? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, like I said at the beginning, that's the reason I gravitated towards your channel that, you know, I mean, there are so many people out there talking running. Very few of them are elite professional runners, but even amongst that smaller group, for me, your channel has risen to the top because every time I watch one of your videos, I feel like, yeah, I'm definitely getting, the real unvarnished deal. Um, I'm, we're, we get to see the lows, we get to see the highs, we get to see the deep running knowledge that you have and are willing to share. It's just, you know, everybody just, you know, I've, I've said this, I think on one other interview that I've done for my channel, um, pause this interview right now, pop up in another tab, and subscribe to Natasha's channel right now. You will not regret it. It's just super awesome. Um, so yeah, I think you're, I think you're very um, in tune with yourself as a person because um, your, your self-observation of the way you present on YouTube is spot on as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. That is an amazing compliment. I've, I need to hear that too because sometimes you know, when you're not seeing like the growth or like the amount of views you want, it's like, uh -huh. what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me about, you know, like the vast majority of the time thinking about my channel. <laughs> it's like, well, here, here this goes. Let's <laughs> then, like, I don't know, but it, it is all about the persistence and um, just continuing to be yourself and like, I wasn't expecting to hear this um, today. So like, that's really cool to hear. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm just being genuine. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're just going to keep growing. You're just going to keep getting bigger because you're delivering what people want, which is reality. So um, on that note, please tell me what people who do subscribe and come back regularly uh, can expect in the near future from your channel. So hopefully it's a lot of things coming soon. Um, I, like I mentioned before, I am training the hardest I ever have in my whole life right now. So it is a little bit hard to like 
manage my time with how long it takes to make a video. Um, but I am making one in the next week. Um, it might be published a little bit later after that. Um, I'm going to do another what I eat um, because that's such a popular trending thing. Like, I guess people really want to know what other people eat, which is weird. But um, <laughs> I think in pro running, it's so important, like refueling your body. And so that's something that I should have learned at the beginning of my career, but I'm learning at the end of my career how to do better. Um, and so I'm going to do a fun one where I'm like, doing a grocery haul and um, really trying to give like a accurate, real insight into what I like to put into my body and what I feel like is best for recovery mm -hmm. and um, like an effort to eat more and to like really sustain this amount of working out that I'm doing. Um, and then I want to do a day in the life as well because I haven't even done one of those yet, um, which I feel like that might be my best one because uh, people probably want to see what what a day in the life of a pro runner. Like, I have a lot of friends who are like, what do you do all day? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't go to an eight, eight to five, but I have a 24-hour job, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're... I, you guys are going to see, if you subscribe, you're going to see um, this continued journey up into 2021 Tokyo, where I'm going to meet uh, when when we're able to compete and it's not mm -hmm. COVID. Um, I'm traveling about twice a month. And so I will be vlogging on my um, journeys coming up and so where cool. I go and I feel like that'll be interesting as well for people to see. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, especially as things start ramping up, you know, um, hopefully we've got a vaccine on the way sometime in the next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. I think, I mean, races are already turning around. Like we're, we've found a safe way to do it. We get COVID tests. I mean, athletes have to work too. So like, I think that we're going to see these things happen. It just might not be how they used to be, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Staggered start lines and things like that. Even it's just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For the for normal races. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. If the elites had to do staggered rate starts, I would, that would not be fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that would be possible on a track. <laughs> But uh, okay, cool. So um, I think we've you've kind of once again, I love the flow of this conversation because you, you're just kind of like um, hammering out the answers before I have to ask the question. <laughs> but um, but um, tell me a little bit about um, how you manage to balance sort of that hyper focus on running, social media, and family, friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, how do you do that in a healthy way? It's hard. And I often find myself like I just got out of a huge slump um, or like a funk. And, you know, like I have to ramp up so much and get so hyper focused for a competition and then travel, 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 COVID tests, do all this, like it, and then compete under all this pressure. And, um, and then once like so my season just ended um and i got to take a break and i just was in this huge funk um because i was drained um and that's just a part of the job yeah. and learning how to lessen the blow um is definitely something i need to work on um sometimes i just kind of let myself go like <laughs> when i took my break i just was like I'm just gonna eat whatever and just wallow around and I'm not gonna work out um, but I would say just having an overall consciousness about your day-to-day -day, like thoughts and um, effort and like just how you're approaching the day like if you go into it with a bad mindset um, or if you just wake up and turn on 
your social media apps like that's that's not a way to live your life. Like you have to have more intention. Um, and so just really focusing on having that intention. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I've suffered from over-focusing on the social media thing myself. So oh, which, I did it. I'd still do it, but it's just like, that made me feel bad and now I have to start my day like <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's not the it's not the most uh positive way to start the day necessarily you know judging yourself on how many clicks you got on overnight type of thing I feel like it just makes you lose touch with yourself like with the true fulfilling parts of being alive and there's this really cool um I think it's a Netflix or a Hulu special called um, The Social Dilemma, which everyone should watch. Um, okay. It, it's really good insight into the actual truth about what's happening um, with where the internet is going and the effects on our brain. Um, it's overload all the time and it's addiction and um, depression. And so just being able to be aware of that and then kind of separate, but also compartmentalize since we do have to engage with it at the yeah. same time so <laughs> yeah yeah wise words wise words right there and yeah i'll definitely check that thing out yeah cool all right so um i'm kind of curious um in order to be able to compartmentalize that social media thing and and keep focus on you know reality um what are your other hobbies and interests in life so I love to write. Um, you, you said I was unique earlier. Um, I, that's one of my outlets for how um, just differently my brain thinks. And um, I'm extremely creative. I'm extremely imaginative. And writing has been a passion for me since I was little. I was writing novels as like a child and like- wow just have like pages of like written words. <laughs> um, so I, that's unfortunately something that's been put on the back burner, even though I did get my degree, like I, I studied writing and did a lot of writing in college. Um, but I want to continue writing my book. So I have a book that I'm writing. Um, what is this? <laughs> and I need I'm glad we're talking about this because I need to write it in my schedule every day to spend time on it. It just gets kind of swept under the rug a lot. Um, and I've, so video making and video editing, um, I really want to kind of build my resume. That's another reason why I started YouTube was to learn the ins and outs of video production and video editing and Okay. Um, the software, like I've been really bad about actually committing to that and my videos could probably be a lot better, but I'm going to buy um, software and like I'm going to get more invested in this passion as well um, and maybe make videos for other people or like, you know, something like that. Okay. Um, coaching is a, my other one. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, that's I love awesome. It. It, I want to continue coaching like for the rest of my life because it's my way of staying with running. Like running is my biggest passion, and there's gonna be a day where I can't compete anymore like I want to, and um, I need to live vicariously through other people, and I need to share my energy with other people to help them do amazing things hopefully yeah. and running that's so great to hear that's i love that selfless attitude of, of you know passing it on you know i think that's just so great thank you all right natasha um i've got kind of a philosophical question for you um kind of a catch-all but um how has running changed your life for the better That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. um, I would have to say that uh, personally, um, 
the spiritual journey that I've had with the act of running and the act of racing um, and just competing and moving my legs and traveling the world and um, pushing my limits every single day and, um, you know, overcoming the failures and there's just so much that goes into it and it really requires something outside of yourself. Um, and it's not just a, I, I can do this all me. Like it's not, it doesn't work like that. And so just feeling connected with something outside of myself, as well as the people who have supported my dreams and, um, like are also a part of making it happen. Gotcha. 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 So yeah, it sounds like, you know, as you said at the very beginning, running is something that you were focused on that you knew you loved right from the earliest parts of life. So um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that shines through. It shines through this entire interview and, and, and everything that you post on your channel. So um, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, my final question for you tonight is, um, if you can answer this, this is, this is a hard one for people, but um, if you can focus in your favorite piece of advice that you'd like to share with other runners. Advice that I've received that you'd received or that, um, yeah, what meant, yeah, let's go with that. What, what has meant the most to you and then share what, you know, it's probably the same thing, but share what um, you think can help others the most as well. Okay. Um, for some reason, what first came to mind, um, and it's so, so simple and like people probably may not understand, but, um, it was actually Corey McGee. She was a teammate of mine um, under New Balance. I don't know why I thought of this, but I remember I, running just wasn't vibing at the time. We were having a conversation um, and like a lot of people know my history. They know I've gone through like the lowest low. Like I'm so emotionally invested in my like running ambitions. Um, mm -hmm. And she just told me it's not an end all be all. Like it's not, basically it's not everything. You don't define yourself off of this. Like this is not what you're doing it for. Um, and like that really hit me hard because like we get so caught up in like the accolades and the goals that we have that we're we're not vibing at all and nothing is happening nothing is working and um mm -hmm. it truly forces you to just be like present and um that's another one is be present that's always my advice to anybody um i have that written on my mirror so i remind myself every single day Cool. Um, and then, oh, another good piece of advice was from my coach, Kevin Hansen recently, this is a recent one. Um, and he said, the best athletes keep a cool and calm head. And especially like runners, um, we panic and mm we are so psychotic about running and what we want to do and like our daily routine and stuff. When things go off the plan, like 2020 and COVID hits, um, mm -hmm. that's when he told me because all of our track races started getting canceled in the spring. And before anyone else, I just knew it. Like I broke down and I was like crying and he was like, no, <laughs> don't we're not going to do that. Like the best athletes keep a cool and calm head. And the moment you start acting emotionally and not logically is when you start injuring yourself or when you do stupid stuff. And yeah, that's brilliant. That's really brilliant. Yeah. So logically thinking and um, keeping it cool up here. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for that wisdom. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's funny because, um, 
this interview has been exactly, believe it or not, what I hoped it was going to be. It wasn't just, um, here's a list of accomplishments. I mean, I, we, we went through the highlights of your career thus far, and I know for a fact there's a lot more greatness to come from you. But what I really value so much and what I think the value for everybody who watches this is, is how to handle things mentally, how to deal with them emotionally, how to not give up. And that's, again, why I love your channel. And, and that's what I love about this interview. So thank you so much. Um, in case my gratitude hasn't uh, shown through so far, I just want to say thank you. Um, it's been a thrill for me to talk to you, Natasha. And um, I want to leave you the opportunity now at the end of this just to um, share with everyone the best ways to find you online, how to get in contact with you, because I know there are going to be a lot of people who want to learn more from you. Yeah, I thank you for this opportunity. I, like I told you earlier, I've been like pumped about this all day. I love doing stuff like this. And I think it's really cool that you, you really like foster the YouTube community um, in our running niche. And um, I've watched some of your other interviews too. So I'm really honored um, to be a part of your channel as well. Um, and you can find me, um, Natasha Rogers. My name is spelled a little differently. My dad decided to put an O instead of an A. So it's N-A-T-O-S-H-A-R-O-G-E-R-S. -E um, I will be posting a new vlog very soon. Um, my Instagram is Natasha underscore Rogers. Um, that's where I, that's basically my business account um, <laughs> and where I spend most of my time um, sharing uh, my successes and my, what I'm doing every day. And like, um, I, I keep it very up to date. So you can follow me on there. Um, and then I don't really have any of the other socials because two is enough. <laughs> I, <laughs> Gotcha. Cool. Well, I'll, sh I'll share that all below in the, in the um, description below this video so that people can just click and get there uh, nice and quick. But, cool. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. It's, it's, it, I can't say it enough. It, it's a real thrill to, to, to get to talk to somebody of your caliber and somebody who's um, at the same time so down to earth. It's just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for me. So thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And just hearing your feedback of how you're receiving my channel was super beneficial for me today. And it also like inspires me to continue to do it. So thank you for right. that. That's great to hear because I, I hope it goes on for a long, long time. Um, so, um, all right, with that, let me just say um, good night and I hope you enjoy your weekend. And um, I hope that we get the opportunity to talk again very soon. Same to you. Yes, let's definitely stay in touch and collaborate again. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you and good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.